Hi, my name is Stefan Jensen. And I'm Robert Hansson. You're watching Fly TV, and today we're doing this. Yep. Sea trout fishing is my biggest passion in life and I've fished so many different places around the world. Um, it's, what amazes me about sea trout fishing is that you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you got these perfect days and you get no takes and then you got these bad conditions and then you get a lot of loads of action. Um, it's just the variety of or in this type of fishing is just it amazes me. Today we are in the south of Sweden uh, on an island called Gotland and this is probably one of if not the most beautiful beautiful spot I've ever fished. It's just magnificent nature and all of that. Today we're not going to do the normal wade fishing as we normally do, as you guys have seen us before. But we're going to target the sea trout from float tubes, pontoon boats. Uh, we're going to fish a bit further out and hopefully we'll get into some very good action. My name is Robert Hansson and I work as a full-time fishing guide here on Gotland since five years back. And I know pretty much every rock and every meter of the coastline, so it's going to be really exciting to do some pontoon boat fishing further out where no one else is fishing. Uh, today we have quite windy conditions with some changing sun and, and clouds, so I think it's a good opportunity for some, for some good action today. Nice. All right, so let's get some trout. Yeah. So it's really nice and clear water here today. And uh, we're gonna start fish a little bit shallow, then work ourselves further out into quite some deep water, but still with a lot of structures, big rocks and so on. And they, they were gonna be much more exposed to the wind too. So. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It looks really good. Yeah. I mean, the variation in the bottom is amazing and it's not too common here, even if we've got a bit of shelter. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to have some heavy wind later on. Throughout the years, I've actually done quite a lot of fishing from, for sea trout from a, from a float tube or a pontoon boat, but I've never fished Scotland from, from anything from the water side. Uh, so this is very exciting. So the, uh, the spot we're fishing here is like, a big area with a good vari variation in the bottom and uh, where we are at right now is so deep that you cannot wade you cannot wade or I wouldn't even be able to put a fly line or fly all the way out here it's not like it's not like a drop off in at the shoreline or anything it's like slowly descending into deeper water and this spot is like as I said, it's good bottom all over, so we just need to fish a big, big area and the fish could be more or less everywhere. So we, we need to fish it fast and we need to, to see if we can locate the fish. Um, when you want to cover a big area like this, it's, it's a very good thing with a pontoon boat with the oars. So you can quickly move longer distances, you can cover much more water and, and you don't ever have to be afraid if you end up further out. You can always just put the oars in and paddle back. And you still got the control of, of the fins. So every time you're fishing you can always position the pontoon uh, with, with the fins. It's like the best of a float tube and the best of a roam boat that, that you can actually get. So you get the uh, you get the best of two worlds. Hopefully the fish thinks the same. So pretty much all my sea trout fishing is with two flies to always have a second option for them. So this is my go-to setup. I feel very confident using this too. The jiggy fly in the back and then a pink shrimp further up on the leader. This is one of my two basic setups. I use this when it's getting a little bit warmer in the water and early spring 
and also in the winter time I prefer using uh, shrimp instead here and maybe a small gammarus that used to be a great setup in a little bit colder yep. water fish on oh we caught a fish really awesome let's get over there <laughs> nice Stefan ah uh, this baby just took my magic minnow orange pink fly Good, Stefan. I think he's more or less done. A little bit slim, but still a beautiful fish. Whoop, whoop. Let's just make a quick release in the water. Let's see if there's another one home. So a nice start here on the first. I can't even help you with that. <laughs> We're gonna change spot now, just 200 meters. Uh, we had a nice start here, uh, but now we're gonna hit the oars. When you're fishing from a, a float tube or a pontoon boat. You should always think about safety. Um, you should always wear some kind of life jacket. I'm wearing a float underwear and also it's very good to to be two guys on the water together. Uh, if something should happen the other one can always help you. It's a very good thing to have communication. Very often it's enough with a phone or something but otherwise a little radio a com radio is a good thing. You don't need to have any like uh, GPS connection or a network for your phone. This will always work. Um, buy one that's waterproof, that's a good tip. Um, the last thing, but probably the most important thing when you think about when you talk about safety, is that don't ever go out if you feel uncomfortable. And that doesn't matter if it's a small lake or a big ocean or anywhere. If, 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 you, if you don't feel comfortable, then, then skip it. Don't go out. So don't be stupid, be smart and take care. Even though you see me with my rod underneath my arm, I um, don't fish steady as many think, just steady roly poly. I do a lot of variation and uh, give it a good pause. I just had a bite when I let the fly drop for a really long while. But this is a nice way to just keep tension on the line all the time. When there's waves and you give slack line, you can just tighten it up. Uh, so you still are in, in control of the fly. And also it helps me relax my shoulders. Uh, while fishing for many days, things like that can really help. Yep. And then sit Bra, bra. Fan, that can be a fail crook. Oh, might have taken the dropper. I think it's a nice fish, but it's coming towards me. No, it's nice, nicely hooked in the mouth. I thought it was false hooked. <laughs> Just swallow that fly. What? happened here? I think it took both flies. That's cool. <laughs> First I had a strike and then slack line. And I think it actually went for both flies. We'll have a closer look on this. At least it's well hooked, I can assure you. This is so strange. It took both flies. Had a strike, tried to set the hook, but just slack line. And then all of a sudden I had another bite. It felt weird and the reason was it took both flies. Oh my god. 
Let's see if we can have a look at her. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, two flies. <laughs> I was expecting, well, it's more often it happens than a double. This never happened to me. Two flies. Another nice silver. Man, this is life. Oh, they're gorgeous. Stefan, what do you say? Time for lunch? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Let's go in. So we're gonna change location again, this time a bit further, so we're gonna load our stuff in the car and, and get moving. New location, this looks really amazing. Loads of structure and very cool rocks. Robert, what do you what do you call these? Uh, these are rauk, how they call on Gotland. It's like a very soft rock uh, material, so it's only the like the inner core that is still standing today. It looks like we're on the moon or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's see if there's any moonfish at home. <laughs> That's a nice fish. Yeah, I'm so happy I have this bonus <laughs> tie on my leader. Yeah, God, they took the dropper. Yeah, the big, big pink one. Yeah, beautiful fish. Yeah. I placed the fly in here. I saw the fish moving in the surface, uh, chasing after it, but it took so long before it took. So I thought I was doing something wrong, but all of a sudden the light lighted it up and <laughs> there it was. Super cool. <laughs> Great, man. Wow, look at this gorgeous silver. Just smashed this dropper. Man, what a nice fish. Great. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Let's get another one. <laughs> so we took this pink shrimp. I always like to present another option. And if I only would choose one, I would fish this one. But uh, I'm happy to always have a second option for them. Maybe I didn't catch it at all if I didn't have it. So I'm really happy about it. Oh. 
fish on. Ah. Oh, it's a good fish. It's very, very windy. And when I saw the birds in here, they were, they were diving and having a feast on small fish. I thought that they might not be alone, so I took a chance and I paddled a bit closer towards the shoreline. And this baby came and ate my fly. It's quite angry. Oh, it's a good fish. Come on, baby. Come on, get it in the net now. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no, no, no. Get him in the, in the net. Oh. Yeah! Hey! 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 Oh, beautiful. Man. Nice fish, Stefan. Thanks. The water was a bit colored, so I changed to a pink orange fly with a matty hen on it just to, to push some water. Oh, that pink orange fly worked perfectly. Let's put him back. Well, so we're in for a short coffee break. Yeah. Hopefully before the uh, evening bite. And uh, we thought we should just show you guys what kind of equipment we're running for this type of fishing. First of all, the rods. So I'm running, a, in this case, a seven weight Marisola rod. It can handle big flies and uh, quite a lot of wind. If the flies are extremely weighted, I like to run an eight weight. Marisola actually means sea salt, so it's, it's made for saltwater fishing. A good reel, in this case a, um, a coast reel, with quite a big capacity and a good amount of backing if, if you hit one of the big guys. Mm -hmm. And in this case it's a, it's a slow-mo shooting head. Yeah. And you are more like running the, uh, the full length line. I like the full length lines. Yeah, yeah. you're running the... Uh, the exo line and also the coast uh, sink too. Yeah, and what about the flies, Robert? Any special patterns for Gotland? Yeah, I have a few ones to choose from here, but... Uh, well, you don't have any girlfriend, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I recommend a lot of dumbbell eyes flies for my guests, just for the movement. So here's a brown fly with uh, some dumbbells. I use this uh, as a quite effective like eel put pattern. Uh, fish it quite slow and jiggy. One of my favorites. It's a great all-round fly, especially when you see a lot of bait fish in the water. As you've seen today, I like uh, to use two flies. Mm -hmm. Just like a pink fly like this with some rabbit, uh, easy shrimp eyes and some chenille. It's kind of a shrimp imitation. Great option for a, a fly further up on the leader. Yeah. And yeah, further down on the leader, uh, I change a lot, but today I've been using a lot of this jiggy fly. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of inspiration from my guests, and mm -hmm. this is from some Norwegian guests that first showed this style of flies for me. Like a good sandy limitation or bait fish imitation. Yeah. yeah. We actually got a Thai TV episode, uh, fly tying, which you can watch up here, of a simple sandy limitation or bait fish imitation. So uh, have a look. Yeah, so that's a great fly. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to add is that I would never leave home without shrimps, mm -hmm. shrimp flies. Yep. One of them could be my go-to shrimp. It looks quite natural, but it's still got these fluorescent uh, colors to it. So, mm -hmm. I'll, as you, you know, I love these fluorescent colors. So, and it got a nice movement to it. And yeah, it's more or less a bit of, of everything. And usually this is like the only shrimp imitation you need. Yeah, it looks really nice. So, um, I like this pattern. And you guys can also watch uh, a Thai TV episode of this fly right up here. And uh, last but not least, the fly I've been fishing today. I actually do not know what this is supposed to imitate. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a, a pinkish, orange, uh, fluorescent thing. But it moves. Uh, yeah, because of the magic head. Yeah. This is a very good attractor fly. And today it actually worked. Yeah. I've caught all of my fish on it. Especially if you got like murky waters or something there where, where the, the, the visibility is, is low. Mm -hmm. This head pushes a lot of water. Um, 
So sometimes it's a it's a very good go-to fly, and sometimes it's just too much. Yeah. But today it worked. Yeah. The last thing I think we should show you guys is what kind of leaders we are running. Um, what kind of what length are you running? A bit longer than the rod. Um, I use a nine foot tapered leader and uh, then a piece of straight floor carbon mm -hmm. about 0 30. Okay. One thing I want you guys to remember if, the, if you're fishing uh, fluid carbon, always bring every single piece of fluid carbon with you back home. Every single piece you cut off because it will never disappear in nature. So uh, bring it back. Okay. So uh, the coffee break is over yeah. and the sun is about to set, so I think it's trout time again. It is. Let's go out and give it a last go. Yeah. Okay, so I got a do double hook up. Um, the only problem is that it's not sea trucks. <laughs> uh, to I at uh, once. Let's see if we can land it. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> they look like identical twins. I've never done that before. <laughs> so I'm fishing this uh, tandem rig with two flies on the leader at the same time and I got one on each fly but wrong species <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I would rather catch one trout than uh, two eyes but uh, at least it's a good fun when something is pulling your line so let's put him back <laughs> oh man so one took the upper fly the dropper fly which is a nymph thing and the, the the head fly is a magic minnow. Oh man, I really fought with a, a good sea trout. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that messed me up. Let's try and catch the sea trout. Do you want to go first? I'm fearful Drowning under solid ground Whoa. Turn it around a bit. Oh yeah, there we go. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> Again on the magic head. Whoa, man. <laughs> a bar of silver. So Robert, a great day has come to an end. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's been great being part of this. Cool. You guys, we hope you enjoyed it. If you want to watch more fly fishing movies like this one, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, follow Vision on Instagram. Thank you. Yeah, now it's done. <laughs>